Hi there, I'm Duncan Moss and I'd like to welcome you to my video blog. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, my friendship with the actress Heather Sears. Uh, she was uh, my next door neighbour for the first 14 years of my life. Uh, uh, we moved house and uh, our friendship with her, her husband Tony, Tony Masters, and uh, her sons, Adam, Giles and Dominic, uh, has continued to this day. And um, I was asked by um, two very nice people, Richard and Nancy, who run this uh, fancy in the Little Shop of Horrors, that shop with uh, a double P-E, whether I would uh, do an article um, about uh, Heather as my next door neighbour. And uh, I thought that was a lovely idea. I said yes, uh, and, you're right. and I've asked them for permission to uh, to read it to you. Um, they said, "Yeah, go ahead. That's fine." It's about seven or eight years ago that I wrote the article, so it was uh, a little uh, while ago. Uh, I've got a few other things uh, to say. Uh, this this was basically the article about the her film, the nineteen sixty two Phantom of the Opera which is a very, very fine film, very, very severely underrated. It had a, it had a great cast, as well as having Heather in it. It had uh, uh, the actor I'm not very familiar with, Edward D'Souza, who was the love interest, Harry. Um, Herbert Long, of course, played the Phantom. Uh, Michael Goff played a very evil character called Lord Ambrose Darcy. Uh, Doctor Who fans will be delighted to see Patrick Troughton in a small but nevertheless very memorable uh, role. And uh, Jerry Anderson fans will be very happy to know that Harry Oakes was the focus puller and Brian Johnson did the special effects. Neither of them get credited on the film. Uh, but uh, so there's a lot, a lot of talent in there. And um, I was told about the film by Adam Giles and Dom. They came over one. They were over one day. We were sitting in a little, in a little, little clump of trees, which was one of our sort of little camps. And they were they had seen the film. It had been on TV quite recently, and they were telling me all about about the story. And it sounded very exciting indeed. And uh, instead of calling uh, when they're referring to the character. Uh, Christine, played by, uh, by the mum. They didn't call her Christine, or they didn't call her the the heroine or anything. They called her mummy. Uh, so I, I had all these pictures of uh, um, Heather down in a in the caverns uh, below the theatre and everything. It all sounded very very exciting. Uh, that must have been in the early seventies. I didn't actually see the movie till Christmas nineteen eighty one, um, when uh, and um, I, and I thought it was very very good. Uh, it's not very frightening. It's uh, very stylish, and the production design, which I believe was by Bernard Bernard uh, Robinson, um, was absolutely fabulous beautiful production design but it looked beautiful the film uh it wasn't particularly frightening and uh it ended up getting a pg with cuts because hammer at the time were making films like as well as horror movies they were making family adventure movies like the devil ship pirates and uh, i think they wanted this to try and appeal to a family audience uh but I don't think it did. And it wasn't, it was directed by Terence Fisher, who was a super director, uh, but it didn't do very well at the box office. And I think it was uh, Terence Fisher didn't make another uh, film for Hammer for quite some time. Um, but it's a great movie. It's available on DVD um, and well worth uh, worth looking at um a very sympathetic phantom played by by herbert lom and uh, this is my article that i wrote it's called my memories of heather sears and uh, just because the the print's rather small and i'm getting on in years i'm gonna have to use my reading glasses so there we go so please bear with me uh, there we go 
Oh, I look like I, I look like Patty from uh, Emmerdale, don't I? Well, not a bad thing. This is a good-looking geezer, but uh, I don't want to get confused with anybody. All right, so here we go, folks. My first memories of Heather Sears, who was one of my next-door neighbours for the first 14 years of my life, uh, were of a very nice lady who drove me to school each day with Adam and Giles, her oldest two sons. I was four. Giles would have been five and Adam must have been seven. It was the year 1967. We were driven to our school, the Grantchester House, in a 1930s Rolls Royce called Effie, which Heather had bought with her husband Tony. They must have been doing very well right at the very early uh, stage of their careers. I had no idea at the time she was a talented actress. I remember her giving me a ticking off for trying to open the car door at the wrong time. Uh, I had these suicidal tendencies even at that young age. Um, I also recall she hated Casey Jones, one of my favourite TV shows. She found my constant talking about last night's children's programmes very hard to deal with. One time she just turned round and begged me to stop talking about television. I would continue to be driven by her intermittently for the next nine years, the last years being in a green mini traveller called Acapantha, which reeked of jetane cigarette smoke and had a faulty third gear that kept sticking. Heather would use an expletive every time the gear crunched, much to the amusement of the revamped lineup of fellow travellers and myself. The classic BBC music station Radio 3 helped calm our nerves. In the summer of 1975, Adam and I were trying to write the script for our first Super 8 movie, The Germans Are Coming, in which was still, uh, in which was still known as The Playroom. Heather appeared and blasted Adam for his part in leaving the house in a real mess. Um, when Heather was angry, she always made her feelings known in quite graphic language. Uh, Heather and Tony were often away for long periods of time, so sons Adam, Giles and Dominic spent a great deal of time with my brother Jimmy and myself. We would make several amateur films uh, and audio scripts together. I know my life was greatly enriched by the whole family. Heather showed uh, Heather showered me with praise when in 1976 I was able to lose a great deal of weight. She helped me with my makeup as Bilba Baggins in a school play I was in later that year at my present school, Shrewsbury House, called Gollum. I have been a fan of J.R.R. Tolkien ever since. Giles gave me an Aurora model kit of the Phantom of the Opera for my 13th birthday, which I still have and treasure. He's fallen apart a bit. I have to do some work on him because he's a bit, some bits of him have fallen off. But then it happens to the best of us. But I dried grass, so let me just go. Where the flipping neck am I? Oh, da, 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 da. There we go. Well, I had been uh, absolutely mesmerised by the BBC showing of the Universal Horror Classics in 1977, I wanted to make a horror film. My dream was realised at the end of the year when Heather let me use her super her movie camera prov uh, provided Adam operated it. The film was called The Zombie Cometh. And this three minutes uh, silent chiller can be found on YouTube on this same uh, video blog. Plug, plug, plug. When I was really upset about having what I thought was a notorious reputation at a certain girls school. Uh, it was actually Surbiton High, by the way. And Wimbledon High School, my, my reputation wasn't much better, I'm afraid. <laughs> Um, 
when I was really upset about having what I thought was a notorious reputation at a certain girls' school, Heather raised my spirits. She said to me that even if it was true, there were several hundred other girls' schools in the country, so there was still a large margin for error. Uh, <laughs> oh, heck, where are we? Uh, over the years, Heather remained a friend. In 1990, we heard the devastating news that her husband, art director and production designer Tony Masters, uh, also a treasured friend, had died of a heart attack. Heather coped with her loss with great dignity. We told her that if there was anything we could do for her, she only had to ask. She tended to keep herself to herself, but a few years later, when we invited to a party, um, for, to our absolute delight, she arrived. She looked really great, and she told us a few anecdotes about people she had worked with. Tragically, looks can be deceptive, and soon we found out that Heather was dying. Um, my mother took her in the car a few times to see her solicitor. Um, she died in 1994. I attended her funeral, as I had Tony's. Um, I was very privileged to know her. She was a great actress, but she was also the na uh, also the neighbourhood. Uh, sorry, beg your pardon. I'm sorry, but choked at the moment. I was very privileged to know her. She was a great actress, but she was also the neighbour who communicated to us over the garden fence, a mother to her boys, and a kind and wonderful person. I miss her and still love to watch her films. Although I sadly never saw any of her stage performances, knowing her more uh, than made up for it. Uh, Heather, we love you. And um, yeah, the, the um, Dominic, Adam Giles and Dom have all done very, very well in the film industry. And Dominic has just worked on the uh, the the the, the uh, House of Dragons, which is the the sequel to um, um, Game of Thrones. Adam's a superb television editor, and uh, Giles works in Hollywood, and um, for I think for Paramount. I'm very privileged to to know them. There's a few things that I forgot to put didn't put into the article. Uh, she said to me one time, Duncan Moss, I'll have you keep your right-wing views out of this house. Uh, although, quite frankly, I don't think my political views are actually that much different to hers. Uh, um, I get more left-wing as I get older. And uh, she also said uh, one time to me, uh, when I was talking about the Beatles, uh, now, Duncan, I like the Beatles, but I don't want to hear about them all the time. Uh, I, I think um, she was a massive Elvis fan, and she had that 40, Elvis 40 tracks. Do you remember the one that came out with the double album? She had that. Uh, I think as a Beatles, she liked thought George Harrison was the dishiest one of uh, the Beatles. Uh, she, um, she was a lady of tremendous taste, um she i remember thrilling watching her in a play uh, that i couldn't stay up to watch to the end but ended up with her dead on a table <laughs> and she uh, when she was driving uh, us to school uh, my mother had, had the pleasure of sitting next to sean connery in a restaurant uh, well, that was nothing we could boast about there because uh, sean connery is a very good friend of heather's and I remember my mum saying something like uh, he stopped playing the Bond, James Bond role because he was miserable with the part. And uh, I, I said that to Heather when she was driving. And uh, uh, she, uh, she said she absolutely exploded and said, because uh, uh, I said my mum had said that. And she said, what does your mother know about Sean Connery? I'm, uh, he's a friend of mine. Um, I went, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, she's good friends with Sean Connery, and uh, she, she told us that uh, he was a very, very appalling driver, apparently. Uh, another uh, thing that she told us that uh, she did um, as an actress, she met uh, Stan Laurel, 
after Oliver Hardy had died and not very long before uh, Stan died. And she asked him for his autograph, which he graciously gave her. And he said to her, um, you, you don't, why did you ask for my autograph? She said, he, he said, in, a, in a, a few years time, Ollie and I will be totally forgotten. And it'd be nice if he knew that they're still, that he and Ollie are still greatly loved to this day. And um, did the, when uh, she was at, uh, she was doing the makeup for in Gollum with her uh, very uh, good friend uh, Marion Sturgeon, they had to put hairy feet on me because hobbits are supposed to have hairy feet, and uh, they, they had trouble getting one of them on, and I shot onto the stage. Um, barely got to my place uh, before the curtain opened and uh, then the, the fight ensued with the orcs in the tunnel and my friend Neil West as an orc charged onto the stage with a pole and caught the curtain of the, and, and ripped the curtain and a very audible rip which caused the audience to collapse in hysterics um, but the, I've all, I don't think I, I think I would have been creative even if I hadn't known Adam Giles and Dom Heather and Tony. But I don't think it would have been uh, the, the 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 treasure would have been there. Um, and uh, I I don't always wallow in nostalgia. I do look, I enjoy the present and I do look uh, forward to the future. And uh, I just um, very very proud to know them. Dominic was my brother's best man and lifelong friend. And um, I, it, it's, been, it's a privilege to know them. They, when I left, um, we moved house in uh, 1977, I was very, very uh, almost traumatized by the move, like Jane Austen was when she, because uh, I thought we were never going to make another film again. We were hardly going to see it. We only moved to Surbiton and we were seeing each other, the family, very regularly. And um, we, 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 the best films were yet to come. And uh, I still treasure the memories of us jumping. We didn't we'll go through. Very often we didn't go bother to go around the, the, into the driveway and go th uh, and knock on their door. We just James and I we just jumped over the fence, uh, and they would jump over the fence to come and see us as well. Uh, so the fence started to look a bit grotty. It needed to it was beginning to break. Uh, we had a climbing frame on one side, which you could on our side, which you could climb up, but. Uh, no, they 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 were. Uh, we had a lot of. We used to have a lot of fun playing with badminton, and we had a, a Stefan um, who was the son of uh, house, housekeeper Geeta, because Tony and Heather were often away. Uh, they had a housekeeper, and their son Stefan. He was involved with our projects as well. He was a, a sweet guy, and uh, yeah, we all got on really really well, and. Uh, they they were they were great times. Uh, sorry, I'd ha if I've rambled on, uh, but um, uh, God 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 bless all of you, um, Master's family. Um, uh, and I never get a uh, I never get bored of watching their names coming up on films. Um, I I still think with their their creative work. The best is yet to come. So I'll sign off now. If you'd like to uh, click the like button, uh, please do. If you want to subscribe to my channel, uh, there's loads of old movie of my old our old films on there, and uh, articles about the Beatles and about amateur filmmaking. It's qu qu quite uh, a, a mixed bag. But I'll I'll, I'll bid you a goodbye and uh, take care, and I hope you'll see you soon. God bless. Bye.